Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll and like and subscribe so your DM recognizes your talent next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Quentin Beck, but you may know him better as Mysterio, the hero from another dimension and the only one who can save the world from the elementals. If I'm being honest, I'm writing this script while I'm watching Far From Home for the first time. Hopefully things don't change too much by the end. Oh, well, there never was there ever a villain so clever as the magical Mr. Mysterio. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to do some magical tricks. Sorry, illusions. Tricks are for kids, and you want to kill those kids. Next, we'll get a drone to do some of our dirty work for us. No sense in getting into the fray if we don't have to. Finally, we'll make sure that we always have a backup plan, whether that's escaping or pure delicious spite. For stats, we'll be using the standard pointer from the player's handbook roll for stats if you want just make sure your intelligence is high intelligence will be number one you're a vfx artist by trade that's a lot of computers and a lot of rendering time but this is a fantasy world just clickety clack and things will work charisma after that dishonesty requires deception because they're synonyms and most things require themselves dexterity next you've got a knack for sleight of hand partially because you can make it look like your hand is somewhere else Follow that up with Constitution, Spider-Man eventually finds you, punches you, and you don't die. That's grit. Wisdom is a bit low, we just need other things more, and you're not particularly perceptive, but we'll dump strength. You're a nerd hiding in the corner from a teenager that is also a nerd. Now that's what I call cowardice. Mysterio is a human, but changelings get to shapeshift. I could see that being useful for you. Varian humans can be almost as tricksy if they take the actor feat, giving you a plus one to your charisma. You have advantage on deception and performance checks to pretend to be someone else and can copy other creatures' speech or sounds after studying them for a minute. People can make an insight check against your deception check to determine if you're faking it. I'm pretty sure that's how it would work anyway. The charisma bump is nice and the advantage could help you convince a grieving teen that you're his dead uncle. Illusion casters are mean this is what you signed up for. Bump that dexterity and intelligence with your two free points, take intimidation for your skill of choice, and modify the charlatan background for performance and deception skills rather than sleight of hand. Not because you don't need it, but because we can grab it from somewhere else. That specific somewhere else is Artificer level 1. We're going to kick this off as an Artificer even though they're not great at illusory casting for a couple of reasons. First, the hit die is bigger, which is especially important at level 1. You also get medium armor proficiency, which the other class will be using doesn't, and I like the skills better for you. Skills like sleight of hand and investigation, the former of which isn't on the wizard list, even if the latter is. You get magical tinkering, letting you make a tiny non-magical object and put some crafty juice into it. You can make it light up, record a voicemail, add an odor, or a static image. You can create an amount of these objects equal to your intelligence modifier, so get creative and combine them to improve your illusions. You can also learn two artificer cantrips. Prestidigitation is very similar to your magical tinkering, basically letting you have three more small magical effects going at the same time. Dancing lights create some tiny dim lights that flitter around in case you need some extra lighting work done. Seriously, proper lighting and shadow work makes or breaks a visual effect. For first level spells, Disguise Self changes your appearance for an hour. Creatures can see through it with an investigation check against your DC of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and intelligence modifier. But the actor feat is going to go a long way in preventing people from even thinking to do that. The best trick the devil ever pulled? was convincing the world that he was Jake Gyllenhaal. Featherfall reduces falling damage for up to five falling creatures as a reaction. You don't have to share it if you don't want to, though. Falling is bad. Keep yourself safe. Second level artificers learn four infusions, special magical things you can do to some items to make them a little more useful, though you can only have two up per day, swapping them out on long rests as you like. Goggles of Night give a creature 60 feet of dark vision, so you can now work at night. Light shows tend to work better when the sun is down. Enhanced armor is useful for pretty much anyone, giving you a plus one to your AC in the armor of your choice. I'd recommend a breastplate. It's the thickest medium armor you can have that doesn't impose disadvantage on your stealth checks, so that would be 17 AC at the moment. Not bad. And you wouldn't give away your position with a bunch of clanging metal. Those are the infusions I would recommend you bring with you, but enhanced arcane focus would add one to spell attack rolls, not something you do all that often. Even later in the build, it'll mostly be saving throws. Spoilers, I guess. For your last infusion, I don't know, repeating shot gives a ranged weapon plus one to attack and damage rolls and makes it magical in terms of overcoming resistances and removes the loading property. If worse comes to worse, you just try and shoot Spider-Man. Third level artificers can choose an artificer's speciality. The artillerist gets an eldritch cannon. 
which has an AC of 18 and HP equal to 5 times your Artificer level. It's immune to poison and psychic damage, as well as all conditions. It has a 0 modifier in all its stats, and heals 2d6 hit points when you cast the Mending spell on it. As a bonus action on your turn, it can fire a Flamethrower, forcing a Dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 15-foot cone in front of it, dealing 2d8 fire damage to those that fail, or you could make a ranged spell attack, dealing 2d8 force damage on a hit and pushing the target 5 feet away, or you could just give creatures within 10 feet of it temporary HP equal to 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier, set up some illusions around it to make it look like a dragon, should make people less likely to try and blow it up. You also get a couple of spells from the artillerist list, shield adds 5 to your AC as a reaction, I'm thinking of this as a little bait and switch, but there are specific spells for that, so if your DM isn't cool with the flavor, just actually say it's a shield. Thunder Wave forces a constitution saving throw on creatures within a 15 foot cube of your person, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet. Have damage if they succeed and they're not pushed. I'm sure you took a couple of audio engineering courses with your VFX degree, it's usually part of the program. I'd love to get an ability score improvement from the 4th level of Artificer, but 4 levels here will stop us from getting a weird spell later and I don't want to name it, so you're gonna have to guess. First level wizards get three cantrips. Minor Illusion gives this illusionist an illusion spell. Wow, what an idea. The illusory image has to fit in a five foot cube, but you could also use it to make some noise that can be as loud as a scream. Really helps sell the illusion when it's making sound, though you can only have one of these up at the same time. For now. To get better lighting, the light spell creates 10 feet of bright light for an hour, and if you need a little pyrotechnics to sell the thing, how about Firebolt? It's a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 fire damage. For spells, Silent Image creates an illusion that fits into a 15 foot cube and doesn't make any noise or have any smell. But your magical tinkering and minor illusion can take care of that. Like all illusions, it can be seen through with an investigation check against your spell save, so it'll be better when we get that intelligence a little higher. Expeditious Retreat is helpful if you're a coward, letting you dash as a bonus action for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration if you need to run away. Unseen Servant is a fun little spell that creates an invisible creature to run errands for you for an hour. It can move around and do anything a person with two strength could other than attack. It goes away if it takes any damage or if it gets more than 60 feet away from you. One of the specific commands listed by the player's handbook is setting fires, which could really add some realism to the illusory fire you've conjured. Practical effects always work better. Illusory Script lets you write a message that only creatures you choose can read, or you can make it read like two different things to two different people with a real and fake message. It's a great spell for gaslighting. Now, technically, wizards can have six first level spells in their spell book at the first level and add two more every level they get, but this video is already going to be long, so like the Sypha video, we'll be talking about the number of spells you can have prepared from your spell book, and you get to pick anything else you want at home, which you should do anyway. You can also recover spell slots on a short rest with arcane recovery of total spell level equal to half your wizard level. Obviously, you're just taking an hour to repair some of your illusion tech. Second level wizards pick a school, and a VFX degree is definitely the real world equivalent of School of Illusion. You get improved Minor Illusion, letting you make a sound and an image with one use of the Minor Illusion cantrip, kind of making it better than Silent Image if you don't mind that it has to fit into a five foot cube. For this level spell, Charm Person forces a Wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they're charmed for an hour, no concentration required. You can charm Nick Fury. Kind of. Not really, but that's a spoiler. Anyway, it's pretty good. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Mirror image creates three illusory duplicates of yourself. When an enemy tries to attack you, roll a d20. If you've still got all three, a six or higher makes them hit the duplicate, destroying it eight or higher when you have two, 11 or higher when you have one. It lasts for a minute and doesn't require any concentration, so you could probably make another Mysterio with silent image as well. Fourth level wizards get an ability score improvement, finally. Investing your intelligence, maybe if we can get it capped, our boss will appreciate our ideas more. Probably not, but worth a try. For this level spell, Levitate lets you make your drone fly, making a creature or object you see float 20 feet in the air, and you can move it 20 feet as a bonus action on follow-up turns. Unfortunately, that's the same bonus action that you would use to make your turret fire, but get it into position, make it look like a tiny dragon with your minor illusion, and it could be great for some bamboozles. If you want to levitate a creature, they can make a constitution saving throw to resist, and keep in mind, creatures falling from heights made by Levitate don't take fall damage, probably because they have armpit parachutes. It doesn't say that in the player's handbook, but that's clearly the implication. If you want to deal some damage with your illusions, Phantasmal Force creates an illusion a target believes is real if they fail an investigation check. If you make that illusion look like something that could attack, they take 1d6 psychic damage if they end their turn within 5 feet of it. Maybe there's a zombie of their uncle beating them to death with a tombstone. 
But I don't want to like put ideas in your head, you know, do your own thing. Fifth level wizards can learn third level spells. Fear forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures within a 30 foot cone emanating from your person. Failing that, they're frightened and they have to use their action to dash away from you until they can make a wisdom save when you're out of their line of sight. It makes them see whatever their worst fear is. I'm not totally sure how imposter syndrome could manifest into a 30 foot cone, but you can bet your ass I'd be sprinting away from it. You're only liking this video because I asked you to. Oh god, I'm spiraling. That's what I get for dumping wisdom, and strength, and dexterity, and charisma, and constitution. Sixth level wizards get malleable illusions, letting you reshape an illusion that lasts for a minute or more as an action, which should save you some spell slots. For this level spell, Major Image creates an illusion that fits in a 20 foot cube, complete with sounds, smells, and temperatures, so long as none of that would deal damage. You can move it around within the 120 foot range and even make it carry on a conversation, letting you get where you need to be to get that one shot off on Spider-Man. He's not bulletproof, he's just really fast. I believe in you. Seventh level wizards can learn fourth level spells. Phantasmal Killer creates an illusion illusory manifestation of a target's worst fears that forces a wisdom saving throw, frightening them if they fail. Additionally, they take 4d10 psychic damage every turn they fail a wisdom saving throw, while MJ breaking up with them because they went to different colleges attacks them. I am assuming that's one of Spider-Man's biggest fears. Eighth level wizards can grab an ability score improvement, cap off your intelligence modifier for the most convincing illusions possible. For this level spell, confusion forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot sphere. Failing that, their actions are not their own. Instead, they roll a d10 if they roll a 1, they move in a random direction and don't take an action. On a 2 to 6, they do nothing, no moving or actions. On a 7 through 8, they make a melee attack against a creature within reach, and on a 9 or 10, they get to act normally. They can re-roll the saving throw at the end of each of their turns, but with all the wacky shenanigans you're throwing around them, it could be difficult. For a little more mobility, fly from the third level gives a creature you touch a flying speed of 60 feet for a minute for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration. Maybe this is you getting a lift from a drone, lord knows you can't actually fly. Ninth level wizards can learn fifth level spells. Mislead turns you invisible and summons an illusory copy of yourself with double the movement speed. You can swap senses with it as a bonus action and make it do whatever you want, really. It lasts for an hour depending on your concentration, but ends early if you cast a spell or make an attack. There's no range limit, so by the end of the spell, you could be three miles away without even having to dash. They can't hurt you if they can't find you. 10th level wizards get illusory self, meaning that once per short rest, you can make an attack miss you as a reaction by summoning a second Jake Gyllenhaal. That really is the dream. Who doesn't want to be up to their gills in Jakey Jills? For this level spell, animate objects will give you more of a fleet vibe for your drones, summoning 10 objects of small or lower, with the ability to use larger objects if you use less of them total. There's a whole lot of pieces to this one in the player's handbook, just check it out. Explaining the whole thing would make the video too long, and it's really something that works better if you're looking Looking at it. 11 level wizards can learn 6th level spells. Programmed illusion lets you set up an illusion that activates when something happens that you decide. This one fits in a 30 foot cube and can perform a little routine that lasts for up to 5 minutes. Maybe it reveals the secret identity of the kid who beat you. That would be pretty useful. Not useful, but fun? 12th level wizards get another ability score improvement. More constitution will help you maintain concentration when superhumans punch you. I'm guessing that's probably difficult. For this level spell, Contingency lets you cast a spell that takes an action to cast and is of 5th level or lower and can target you. Like Program Delusion, you decide what will activate it sometime in the next 10 days. Maybe put Mislead on yourself and have it activate when you get caught, then bounce away without worrying. 13th level wizards can learn 7th level spells. Mirage Arcane lets you change the look of a 1 mile area, and by look I mean not that it's everything sound touch smell temperature so basically it isn't an illusion a creature with true sight can see that it's illusory but will still interact with the physical elements of the illusion because it isn't an illusion because there are physical elements you can also use this to create difficult terrain because it's real it's a really strong illusion spell even though it's not illusion. 14th level illusion wizards get illusory reality, letting you use a bonus action while an illusion is up to make a non-magical, non-living part of the illusion real. It remains real for a minute, so if you need a bridge, you got a bridge. If you need a wall, you got a wall. Get creative. Player creativity is instrumental for an illusion caster. For this level spell, Project Image lets you create a visage of yourself within 500 miles. It can move twice as fast as you normally would, and you can see through its senses as well. The range on this is absolutely insane, meaning that you could cast it in Cleveland and have the illusion appear in New York City. Obviously, cheap vacation is the main use for this spell. 15th level wizards can learn 8th level spells. The maze spell automatically sends a creature to a labyrinthian demiplane that they can't escape from until they make a DC 20 intelligence check. 
Garistro demons and minotaurs actually make this check automatically, so don't try it on like a cow version of Thor. Boy, wouldn't that be wild if there was a cow Thor? Wild! It lasts for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration, which can help you get away with the money while Spider-Man is lost in Inceptionville. 16th level wizards get our last ability score improvement. Grab more constitution to make sure your spells are staying up. For this level spell, grab greater invisibility from the 4th level, making a creature you touch invisible for the spell's 1 minute duration. Considering your turret has 15 HP, it might be useful to make sure that people can't see it. Our capstone is the 17th level of wizard, where we get a 9th level spell slot. This spell is a little weird. Actually, it's just weird. The weird spell forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures in a 30-foot radius sphere. Failing that, they're frightened and take 4d10 psychic damage every turn until they can pass. It's basically an AoE version of Phantasmal Killer and can rack up some serious damage as long as everyone isn't wise. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you've got plenty of methods to mislead, manipulate, and overall bamboozle your foes. You're also very mobile with fly and levitate as a backup if you run out of third level spell slots. Finally, you're going to be very hard to hit with mirror image shield and a base 17 AC thanks to your enhanced armor, making you very tricky. For weaknesses, almost all of your damage is psychic, which won't work well on many constructs. You're also pretty reliant on wisdom saving throws and regularly fighting someone with superhuman senses, which is less than ideal. Finally, illusions in general get ruined by people interacting with them, which adds an extra level of unreliability to these spells. But you've got so many different ways to make sure that they don't even want to get close to whatever monster you've summoned. Gas the lights, light the gas, and get ready to mess with the minds of your enemies. Just maybe don't pretend to be a father figure to Peter Parker? That's it's pretty much a death sentence. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Spider Man has a great rogues gallery, but so does Batman. Vote in the poll for Bane, Scarecrow, or Killer Croc. And come back Thursday to be as swift as a coursing river.